A very warm welcome to this edition of Roundtable Talk on GFN TV. I'm Franz Molefe Mudise. To help us unpack the state of the nation address, we are joined by our political analyst, Mr. Mpo Make, uh, commonly known as uh, Mapadi. Welcome and uh, good evening to you. Uh, uh, good evening, and I'm also greeting the viewers. Yes. Now, uh, Tate Mabadi, your impressions about the State of the Nation address. What uh, What is your overall uh, impression? Uh, I should say maybe in few words. Uh, others are saying it was a bold uh, truth-telling. Mm -hmm. But for me, I identified um, unsettledness, unsettlement, mm -hmm. uh, because that cannot be taken away from what is happening in the council right now. Identified unsettlement from the president. Yes, I yes. mean, given the issue he of... He was unsettled. Yes, <laughs> he, was, he was, for me, he was visibly unsettled. Uh -huh. And I will qualify this by saying he started by um, stating or quoting former President Tawombegi's situation yes. before he, his uh, recall. toppling or yes. re, uh, re, 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 recall. He did mention the issue of... Uh, fighting for the soul or the battle of the soul of the ANC. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows what happened in the battle of the soul of the <laughs> ANC. Yeah. So hence I say I have, I have noted that moment of not being settled, yeah. not being settled yeah. and certain. After that, president called in the masses to rally together mm. uh, with him, to rally together united as a country. So those things can show you that this is a man who is saying, hey, I'm looking over my shoulder, I'm scared, I need help, help me, assist me. So hence I say for yeah. me... Yeah, are you saying he's seeing himself at the... Hey, Wembegi is right now. He, yeah, yeah, at the exit launch. Yes, he sees himself <laughs> very much at the exit and he's saying, uh, please help me. Mm. But uh, he used diplomatic ways, you, yeah. know, you know he's a good poet. <laughs> but, but, okay, but you think... The point that he, the overall speech, while still on the imp overall impression, was it in touch with the reality on the ground? Look, I've noted a few things. Uh, as I said before, last summer he made some promises. Yes. Economic recovery plan, mm -hmm. creating jobs, yeah. and what else? Uh, let me see, fighting corruption. Yes. And only one, in my view, that he, many people would say, yes, he did a lot of good work. Mm -hmm fighting the pandemic. Yeah. yeah, he even made example referring to himself. If I did not take the vaccine, yes, yes, maybe yeah. I would not be here with you now. Yeah, yeah. So this is one area that I would feel that there was a report back mm. cut. But on the issue of jobs, he faded totally away from that. Instead of telling the nation, this is these are the jobs, the number of jobs we have created. Mm. And we failed to reach this target yeah. because of one, two, three. Mm. He shied away from it. Yeah. And then um, on the issue of uh, economic plan, yeah, recover. he spoke about pandemic and its impact. Mm. And if you can check, by the time he made that promise, yes, people have had already died. Yeah. But the issue of H uh, um, pandemic was already dying out. Mm. The only issue was the new variant. But uh, really how did those promises he made in the previous zone how were they disturbed by covid i, I really uh, uh, did not hear him saying that mm. after, uh, at all yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i think uh, those are the are the, are the are the issues i feel that there was no proper report back mm. for example july events yeah 300 plus people died uh, value to property, mm. billions, uh, was wasted. There is no accountability. Mm. Mm. The report, the panel report or advisory council yeah. on those July riots clearly stated that the executive must take responsibility. Yeah. There is nothing that the president told uh, the nation about taking responsibility mm. Mm. on such matters. So I want to tie this with the issue of saying, for me, he appeared like a man who's not settled, a man who's seeing his exit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now having said that, now we know that uh, our country is uh, mainly uh, 
challenge with this, we are facing this uh, challenge of triple uh, challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Mm. Did, did you think, did you hear him saying anything regarding to that and the practical, uh, giving, being practical in terms of addressing uh, these triple challenges? Hence I said, uh, maybe I should have said it is a non-action or actionless, um, more of no promises type of a speech. Mm. He wanted to buy away from the previous sonas, yeah. where we would make promises boldly, we'll create these jobs, we'll do this, we'll do that. Yeah. This time he fight away, he shied away from making many promises. And I must say that uh, a take home for most of us was the surprising uh, departure mm. from the ANC known policy trajectory of interventionist, state interventionist economic uh, model. Yeah. He spoke yeah. about purely, he said, the state can only create an enabling environment yeah. Yeah. to do yeah. business, yeah. Yeah. which means the private sector is the one that should be left mm. to do business, to hire, to promise jobs. Yeah. So in a way, but, it was a radical departure. Yeah. But isn't it actually, uh, isn't it that uh, uh, his statement, actually he, he, has been, he, has been now, he has been truthful, to the role of government, because I mean, after all, that's the role of government. The role of government is to create an, an enabling environment yeah. for business to to flourish, and anyone else yeah. uh, to be able to enter the market and so on. Look, that's why I'm laughing. I'm not laughing because it's a joke. <laughs> I'm laughing because if you remember Melindi Sulu, the minister spoke about constitution not being effective uh -huh. to address people's challenges is yes. this is the same issue mm. the minister spoke about judiciary as sellouts or something like that but also acknowledge that they themselves as the political elite they are dining with capital mm. you know so looked the other way around uh, as you said um didn't he at least tell the truth mm. <laughs> and uh, instead of lying yes since taking power in 1994, mm. African National Congress government of Trapatite Alliance mm. managed, you say it's a lie, managed this thing <laughs> very well almost. Because they have always been able to be communist at night, uh, during the day yeah. and socialist in the morning and business people during the night <laughs> as they dine with capital. And then most of them since Mandela, yeah. they were able to to put these two faces to the people, three faces, to the same masses. A same person is wearing a mask. Mm. This side or behind me, I'm a capitalist. I want privatization. Mm. Here, half my face during morning, I'm now speaking, hey, socialism, yeah, hey, socialism. Mm. During the day, I become a communist, you know. But the issue is, 1994 deal, the elite deal was elitist. It was a deal between private business and comrades yeah. or people who wanted to take power. Yeah. So international investors brought together in Lusaka, ANC government, sorry, ANC leadership uh, business, which was mostly Afrikaner and whites. Yeah. But in the main, all of these two groups, they were represented by capital, yeah. by international capital. The government, national party, they were brought in with the ANC to negotiate a deal. No, so that South Africa is not destroyed. What can we do? Then that lie, line was, was adopted. No, look, what we are going to do, we are simply going to give you political power and we keep economic power because we share economic power with international investors. South Africa is listed now as PTY of UK. If you, if you go to New York uh, Stock Exchange, you will find that. that uh, or, or major stock exchanges, you will find that South Africa is a private company owned by the Queen. So that is why people will tell you that South Africa falls under the Commonwealth states. What are Commonwealth states? Those are properties of the Queen. Mm -hmm. So for us to take back the land, it will take a revolution. So we, we ducked the issue of a revolution. We decided to negotiate and agree with the oppressor 
and the and the and the colonizers. Remember, is a okay, settler okay, colonialist okay, 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 type of an approach. Okay, let's come back to the to the state of the <laughs> nation address. Yeah. <laughs> to <laughs> and we'll 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 sometime when we have time we'll we'll venture into uh, <laughs> those uh, that territory. Let's speak of the new entrants mm. uh, into into a business who actually uh, are faced with the lot of uh, bureaucratic uh, red tape. Mm. Did you think in his speech uh, did he say enough to allow uh, new entrants into uh, into business uh, funding and so on? I think this is tied to maybe he was trying to answer ANC Youth League. Uh, I think it's 13th if not 17 point demands yeah. later. Uh, where they were speaking about involvement into the economy, mm. the SMMEs, and all of that. But look, Mr. Mudise, if you want to be a president that uh, that runs the country properly through consultation mm. and through consensus, you do not take departments of other ministers mm. and house them into your own office. This issue, it looks like the issue of intelligence agencies. We wanted an independent national uh, in intelligence agent, independent, to depart from that time when apartheid used to uh, 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 use that o uh, office needs to go and do a lot of harm towards people. Uh, now, when democracy came, that office had to be taken out of the presidency had to be taken out of cabinet, had to be taken out of the of the leaders. It had to be an independent institute that will do investigations proper, you know? And now even the issue of SMMEs. He spoke about someone who will be hired to brought in to deal with red tape. Yeah. Then what is the role of SMME department? What is the role of DTI? What is the role of everybody else who's dealing with economic issues but and trade it, and industry. But isn't it that perhaps if you had you have someone who comes with a bad uh, eye view mm. and to say this uh, because you are involved and because you are involved you might yeah. you know, uh, might be some blaring lines. But if you have someone who's independent as the president suggests comes with a base eye view to say uh, these are the challenges, these are the recommendations. The, that for me also shows lack of trust, <laughs> motion of no confidence to his own ministers, yeah. some of them, motion of no confidence to the department, some of them. And I think you might see, he also mentioned the issue of special agency that will be tasked to deal with recruitment in the public service, especially in SOEs, mm. where you will get uh, directors, you will have... Uh, a little minimize political interference. What does it tell you? It tells you that I want to micromanage things now. I must take this SMME issue. It should come to my desk. But I'm telling you, a president who does this, it's like the principal who wants to be a teacher and the principal and the administrator at the same time. It is not workable. It is not sustainable. What he had to do, fire people that are not doing the job. Hire people that are doing the job. South Africa is not lacking of good policies. Mm -hmm. We have good policies, we have a so-called good constitution. Mm -hmm. The only problem we have is implementation. We mm -hmm. needed a president who is action-orientated, a president who takes decisions, a president who says, no, I'm going to make changes in the SMME because I realize there are loopholes. Yeah. Not that I'm going to take them now <laughs> and to parachute them to the president office. Why? That is centralization of power for me. Mm -hmm. So that is why I'm saying... Uh, he might have sounded like he's trying to answer what the youth league is saying, mm. but uh, it's like that issue of uh, he he in the in the same vein he touched the issue of um, community policing forums. He touched the issue of uh, teacher assistants, yeah. although he never yeah. used the word teacher assistant. Mm -hmm. But look, there are shootings mm. inside school premises. Yeah. How will those young people who are not trained security, mm. who are not police? How will they arrest or how will they stop somebody who's coming to the school to do such acts? They could not even detect that this person, they think it's someone who's bringing kids to school. Only to find that these are criminals, these are thugs who want to kill teachers, who want to kill 
uh, 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 staff members. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying the shortcut approach, Mr. Modise, it's not going to help us. You have police. Let them deal with protecting the schools. If you remember the local government uh, clause in our constitution, yes. it talks about municipalities protecting the schools. The schools are a, are a purview of local government, not president. Yes. So hence I'm saying you are coming with centralization of power. You are coming with, you are, you are very uncertain and so much unsure that you want to micromanage everything. And then by you bringing everything on your lap, you are likely going to fail on doing everything. You are not going to succeed in doing anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying there was no good <laughs> in that uh, address, yeah. but let us deal first with the negatives, yeah. you know, as they come where there were flip-flops. Yeah, yeah. For, for one, that issue that we have left, please let us go back to it in a minute or so. <laughs> the issue of policy, yeah. the issue of economic direction. Yeah. Once you depart from your mandate, it's when you will start to do such things. Yeah, yeah. Julius Malema yeah. speaks about the issue of... No, no but isn't mm. that now he's trying to redirect uh, the, the, the government or, or the ruling party, the ANC, into the right direction? That is, the, 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 task, the task of government, mainly... 1996 class project is to is to create the an, an enabling environment. 1996 and class project yes. of Mbeki yeah. <laughs> came with that. He made sure that liberalization policies are more favorable, are more implemented, and it led him to what more job losses. Yes, yeah, some people are saying GDP grew, but it grew at the expense of job losses, and that militated unions, and that militated the rise of anti Mbeki move, and hence he was taken out. So even this one, he is uh, 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 trodding on a, li a less trodden path, mm. sliding on thin ice, because once you want to tell highly militarized unions of South Africa that uh, jobs are not going to be created by, by, by the state, what are you saying about unions that are but, representing... Okay, let's see, how, let's see. Has, it, has it worked? Uh, the, the, this route that of the government itself trying to create work. No, it's a policy. So I don't understand if the president wants to change the policy through a state of the nation address. I don't understand it. ANC is going to a conference around December. <laughs> Why didn't he wait for that moment and he can canvas that policy change? Because that's a policy. That's yeah. an African National Congress policy. State interventionist economy. Yeah. The plan and the market meets. But isn't it that is that is precisely the problem that people have now uh, used uh, the ANC and government interchangeably? Yeah, but he must not come with with a uh, wrong creative ways. Uh, and, he must and, go to and, the conference, and, the party that appointed him. And, and we exactly, did not vote for him. And exactly that that uh, people because people now have used uh, government and the ruling party interchangeably. Uh, we've now even have bled the roles Mr. of, 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 of Mr. Medici, unless if you're telling me <laughs> President was campaigning for 2024, <laughs> that uh, this is what I believe. The ANC <laughs> believe that, that you must have a state interventionist model, yeah. not me. I, Cyril Matamera Ramaphosa, I want a, a market-driven yeah. economy as a campaign, <laughs> yes, then I will agree with you. But you cannot stand on a platform, yeah. on a ticket, of a party that has sent you to government mm. and you contradict that party. Yeah. Believe you me, few, 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 few days you're going to hear somebody repeating these words. Yeah. Exactly yeah. what I'm telling you. You'll hear NEC members, I don't want to speak about the yeah. likes yeah. of Tony Engen, yeah. his <laughs> nemesis. <laughs> okay. I think yeah. right now they are writing letters. This, co this comrade must be recalled yeah. now. Let's, let's, we told let's, you let's he's move. an agent of capital. <laughs> let's move, let's move uh, forward, Mr. Mike, and say, there was this issue of experience in the yeah, past uh, yes, and yes, so on. Yes. And I think also the uh, young people try also to raise it. Yeah, again, uh, to revive. In their in the, in the, in the, uh, letter to the uh, president. So mm. How far uh, in terms of policy uh, implementation of this thing that, uh, you know, you'll find that government or government departments wants to hire someone for cleaning, cleaning, mm. uh, for a driver, mm. a porter, uh, or, or the hospital, yeah. you know, 
and they took the one of the requirements there would be five year, yeah. ten year, fifteen years yeah. year experience. Yeah. yeah. No, this is very important because it's a clear departure. South Africa is at the crossroads. On the one hand, you have the militant nationalists, EFF, uh, some unionists, some uh, socialist parties, uh, and what else? Who, who, who else? Maybe youth. Hmm. They want to see themselves being employed. They want to see themselves as beneficiaries of the system. Yeah. But look at the kind of economy that we are having. South African government cannot employ most of us, majority of us. Mm. Certain parties now, they have members of MPs, members of parliament inside National Assembly and provincial governments. I'll give you EFF for one. Mm. What assisted EFF is the rhetoric of let us in source. Remember VETS, University, UNISA, some of the state, state uh, uh, institutions were used mm. as in sourcing, in sourcing, in sourcing, in sourcing pipelines. Yeah. So that tomorrow, when elections come, those that we have put into jobs, those that we have taken into the system, they will remember us and they will vote for us. Mm. And what's the result? You have now MPs of EFF inside parliament. Yeah. But now this is, it is hitting straight at what is called patronage system. Patron and client networks. Mm. We assist you, we get you into the system where you do not qualify, where you do not deserve, mm. but we get you there. It's what the ANC have been using, cater deployment. People are being employed without qualifications. So the question that you're asking is a very brilliant question because it allows us to see between Ramaphosa and the other people, what is the problem? What is the difference? Mm. The difference is now we have state capture. We have state capture because of affirmative action. Why? Because the, the directors were controlled by people who do not even have qualifications. Mm. People who were not supposed to be there. So if the directors were, were employed properly without using cadre deployment, affirmative action, insourcing forcefully, you know, for popularity reasons, mm. we wouldn't be here. So we have a state capture because of policies were not followed. People who did not qualify were hired. Mm. So this hits back at, the, at this at this kill experience demand. Yeah, yeah. How can you hire someone without experience? If there's a problem and there is mm. of youth unemployment, of people without skills, how do we get them into the system? Come with other creative ways. He spoke yeah. of SMME loads, you know. Yeah. No bank has refused people loan. Mm. But the problem is you don't have security. Yeah. You do not have collateral. Mm. We do not have that. Yeah. So maybe these are where the state must intervene. Yeah. Go to banks and tell them, allow these people, even if they do not have security, mm -hmm. relax some of your, you know, collaterals, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. make them accessible, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do agree that the state can come up with a fund. Mm -hmm. I know that, that, that there are billions that were uh, 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 loaned from IMF. Yeah. Get some of the billions, create a fund. Yeah. But this fund, do not create any other agency. You know the problem with this government, creating agency for everything, agency. special agency for everything. So you are what? Uh, the system becomes too much saturated, you know. Yeah. The system is too much uh, 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 um, overloaded. Yeah. You create too much du duplication. One day I, sp I spoke to you about the issue of reduction of ministries. Yeah. You have a lot of ministries that are not necessary. Mm -hmm. You also have deputy ministers that are not necessary. So you need to downsize. For me, I think state capture was able to show us the wrongs. Yeah. Some people do not accept it, but for their own reasons. Yeah. But for those of us who are watching with keen interest, with an eye of a hawk, yeah. we can see that there are holes that are punched yeah. Yeah. to the system. Mm -hmm. So to answer you, the issue of uh, hiring people without experience is not the solution. Mm -hmm. It's a serious, serious, serious disaster. Mm. The issue of taking people to jobs where they are not needed just to create jobs, it's wrong. Mm. We must create real jobs. Yeah. We must create sustainable jobs. Mm. EWP program is not sustainable jobs. Yeah. People are trying to run behind what Zuma has done. Mm. Zuma created mm. EPWP programs. Yeah. So people are saying Zuma was even successful than you. Because Zuma created jobs. But those are not jobs. Yeah. People who started there, they are now unemployed. Yeah. These are new people. So you are just rolling and, in and, and out. And I'm sorry, I'll start sounding like a broken uh, record. record. <laughs> <laughs> and, say, and perhaps this is why uh, 
the president uh, has said that now we should the government should now do its job which is to create an enabling environment and move away from creating this uh, uh, what they used to call job opportunities <laughs> because you know one would argue that those job opportunities were created for political expediency or, or other other things but now just uh, last week people of uh, Mamilodi around the uh, uh, East Fabric area they experience uh, floods yeah uh, people of Harangua for the past four months they uh, have not enjoyed uh, services the police station yeah no lights uh, because of uh, there were no electricity after listening to the to the president uh, residents of Mamilodi and of Harangua and other residents uh, across uh, South mm. Africa, who have listened to, uh, you know, who are experiencing service delivery challenges. Yeah. Uh, after listening to, to the president, to think uh, they now, you know, can sigh with the, uh, uh, can they, they find some, some, some relief out of what the president uh, has said that addressing their own uh, challenges. Okay, now look, he, he spoke about a, a, a new plan. Yeah. Where South African National Defence Forces will will even intervene in assisting with building bridges, it will, uh, so he he really tried to come up with mitigating factors, you know, yeah. intervening programs to ensure that the water that because they in 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 that demand there is also this issue of access to water, access to land, access to this and that. But the fact of the matter is, you can only give what you have. Yeah. Tswani now is experiencing electricity cut-offs, mm. you know. Yeah. It's an issue that I can tell you for sure. If you come with that administration list, that um, marketer list program, you're not going to succeed. In Soweto it is like that. People used to chase away as calm people. They had to come with the police and the metropolis. So in short, the speech was not in touch yeah. with the masses on the ground. The masses want free things. That is one. That is why he returned the issue of the 350. Mm -hmm. He knows. The masses wanted basic income grant. Mm -hmm. Those that are not employed. Yeah. The masses can do jobs for themselves. Others can even take the 350, yeah. open a baking, a small baking business at home. You know. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that we, have, we, we need to accept is that what, is the role, what was the role of the state capture? Yeah. For me, I would say the role of the state capture was to show us where we went wrong. Yeah. To, for me, the state, yes, can create jobs. Mm. But let's not create jobs for cadres. Yeah. Let's, not create, uh, let's not employ people who are not qualified because we want them to vote for us. Mm. Because if you do that, then they become a bulwark. Yeah. They become your defense yeah. wall. Yeah. Maybe on the, on the last uh, point I would like to confess with you is the issue of NHI. Mm. Uh, do you think from what the president said uh, last uh, night, is, 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 is it still in a, in a, in a, a matter of a pep, a pep dream? Yes, because uh, you have, you know, we promise things that are not policy possible. Yeah. We, every government is driven by policy, not feelings, not emotions, not slogans. Now you have parties that want slogans and they chant slogans even in the National Assembly. Whereas the National Assembly, it's where we engineer policy. It's where we are trying to formulate policy, but yeah. we are using it to campaign. Yeah. So we need to change direction. We need to change our approach, be realistic. As the president, you said he was realistic <laughs> in saying what is the role of the state. But that is the role of the state, not in a, a state of, of the kind of developmental state that we are yeah. remember we are uh, we are we are creating an enabling capable developmental state yeah. which is state interventionist yeah. which can respond to economic challenges mm -hmm. you know yeah. poverty inequality and unemployment yeah. but the the route that the president took yesterday is a true western liberalist type of uh, 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 state economist for this Thatcherist, you can mention them. <laughs> on that, uh, Liberalist. <laughs> on that Neoliberalism. 
on that note, uh, Mr. Mike, let me thank you very much for yes. always uh, availing yourself. Yeah. And uh, that's how we come to the end of our program uh, of the roundtable talk on the G Think TV. And let me also remind you to subscribe and like our channel. I'm Franz Molefemo Dise. Till we meet again, peace be with you.